this is an old building, you know, it's got a lot of history. It includes uh, stories of ghosts. So we've had uh, quite a few stories over the years of people coming in and saying that they saw something or heard something and uh, more than just the creaky floors and uh, uh, door slamming, you know. <laughs> so one that has always bothered me was somebody had gone down in the basement below the kitchen and they said uh, they, they uh, saw this uh, uh, group of old men down there uh, uh, playing poker. And uh, I never got an answer from them as to, you know, were they using real cards or ghost cards? How did, how did you know they were playing poker? But um, then there's a story about uh, Irene. And Irene was a, a housekeeper here and she, uh, she had hung herself in one of the rooms upstairs. And it was an unrequited love sort of thing. And uh, so there's claims that you see the lady in the long dress going up and down the halls or showing up in a mirror or something. Well, there's the whole story about Black Jack Ketchum. That's a key part of the history in Clayton. He was uh, all over Texas and New Mexico, Arizona, but he met his demise here at the end of a rope. And uh, uh, after that, uh, uh, Clayton uh, and Union County and even the state decided that they weren't going to hang anybody anymore or ha have train robbery as a capital punishment. And uh, uh, they weren't going to go through that again. There's a lot of theories why Blackjack was decapitated, but uh, it was a pretty gruesome event uh, for everybody <laughs> involved. But, uh, and uh, to a certain extent, even more gruesome that uh, uh, they took his head and they sewed it back on before they buried him. <laughs> they buried him out at the cemetery, uh, the Clayton Cemetery. And there were two aspects of the cemetery out there run by two different groups. And uh, uh, neither group wanted Blackjack in their cemetery. So they built him, they put the grave for Blackjack in the uh, center of the road between the two, and that's where it is now. The Eklund was always uh, in the forefront. Carl Eklund made sure it was always in the forefront for the most modern uh, renovations. You know, it was the first place to have electricity in this region. It was the first one to have uh, indoor plumbing. He was an immigrant from Sweden. And in fact, he came across on the ship that carried the last pieces of the Statue of Liberty. And uh, he, uh, you know, back then, um, the West was attractive to a lot of people. You know, they, you know, go West. He started out with a little place over at Folsom, which is right down the road from here. Um, and uh, he had a, a little saloon there and he had a partner he was the partner was english and uh uh so the local railroad uh, owners uh when carl eklund was gone temporarily the local railroad owners uh decided that the workers were spending too much time in the saloon and they burned it down and the uh, englishman took off with all the money so Carl Eklund had to go down to uh, uh, Las Vegas, New Mexico. And uh, he served as a waiter down there. And he had his black waiter outfit, you know, and uh, in one of the hotels, probably the plaza in, in uh, Las Vegas. And uh, um, then he heard that this new town was being built called Clayton. And so, um, he, he didn't have any money, he didn't even have a horse. So he, uh, uh, he walked from uh, uh, Las Vegas, New Mexico, all the way to Clayton in his uh, uh, fancy uh, waiter outfit and uh, <laughs> came here and uh, got tied in with uh, the people that were running a mercantile 
on which now um, after Carl Eklund got it, it uh, became the uh, saloon. And then he added on uh, this other portion and uh, in 1905, seven years before statehood, he added the third story. And when they put in the telephones, there used to be 44 rooms in this place. The cowboys in the region all heard about it. So they all rode in, got a little bit drunk, and they spent all, each one checked into one of the rooms. And so they spent all night calling each other back and forth on the phone. And of course the operator that was at the switchboard was going like crazy trying to <laughs> plug in for everybody to chit chat with each other and try out that new technology. The bullet holes we have in the ceiling, there's uh, one above the antelope head in there. Uh, we're not sure the story on that one, but there was uh, uh, some other ones above the uh, old bar. And those were from a cowboy that uh, got all excited when the telegraph operator came in and announced that Warren Harding had been elected president. So that was about a hundred years ago. And uh, um, a lot of times people will ask, well, uh, why aren't there, if there were gunfights in here, why aren't there more holes in the ceiling? And I said, well, they weren't aiming at the ceiling. <laughs> so most of the guests are, first of all, amazed that a place like this even exists anymore, and especially in a small rural town like Clayton, New Mexico. It's really uh, a shock for a lot of people that uh, this is a unique place. This is not your average chain hotel or restaurant. And we kind of pride ourselves on that. This is a unique place. It, uh, it harkens back to in history, but uh, uh, we get a lot of comments from people that just, you know, you got to keep this place. You got to keep this going because uh, you just don't see this much anymore.